Good Monday evening, everyone. Uh, just a reminder, click that like button, uh, thumbs up on our uh, like this page or like this video, and then subscribe. It is free. And then click all on notifications, and you'll be notified every time we go live or post content on YouTube. Anyways, good evening. Just want to give you a heads up, too. We're still giving out, giving away um, No Weather Radio is over the supporter hub on Facebook and the members only uh, area on YouTube. Uh, pretty much every Saturday through the month of April. Uh, we've already given away a lot this, this month already, and we're going to give away more next weekend as well. So uh, if you want to uh, support the work we do for you, you can click that join button on YouTube. Uh, there's di several different ways to to um, support us, and then on Facebook you can you can join the supporter hub as well. Now let's get into uh, current weather. Now tonight we have frost advisories in the light light blue here in Kentucky, uh, far eastern parts of uh, Tennessee, and into the mountains here. The dark blue is freeze warnings all the way down towards uh, the. North Carolina and Georgia border, and then all the way up the Spine Appalachians here uh, through most of West Virginia, up towards Pennsylvania and most of Ohio, and even up into Michigan as well. Now, back here towards we have towards California, we have a lot of snow melts happening. That's why we have flood watches, flood warnings uh, out this way. Uh, the, the rapid Snow melt is starting to occur, but there's still about 90% left of snowpack out here to still melt across parts of the West and California. And then we have winter storm warnings basically through the Rockies here and then towards uh, the foothills just west of Denver, above about 6,500 feet or so. You're going to get plastered out there uh, starting tomorrow through tomorrow night into Wednesday. Uh, one to two feet of snow is possible above 6,500 feet or so, uh, pretty much east of the Continental Divide in the mountains there, uh, just west of Denver. Uh, Denver is still a little bit of a question mark because um, they're sitting at about, you know, 5,500 feet or so, uh, between, uh, you know, 5,200 and 5,500 5, feet. So we just got to, uh, they're basically a wait and see at the moment, but it's going to be real borderline whether they'll see uh, some accumulating snow there or not. All righty. Uh, so that's uh, basically sums up for this evening. Let's get into the next few days because we're going to be seeing some uh, very beneficial rains out here in the in the southern plains, and then we're going to have some severe weather to deal with uh, as well. All right, severe weather is ramping back up for Texas. Uh, that is, we have a marginal risk basically from southeastern Colorado all the way through the panhandles of uh, Texas, Oklahoma, southern Oklahoma, down through uh, Paris, Texas, Tyler, uh, and Lufkin, Houston, over towards Lubbock as well under marginal risk for, this is for tomorrow, Tuesday, of course. Uh, and then the slight risk basically from Dallas, Fort Worth, over towards Abilene, Waco, down to Austin, Texas. Uh, Columbus, uh, College Station, slight risk of severe weather tomorrow. All modes will be possible. We're talking large hail, uh, damaging straight line winds, 60, 70 miles an hour, and isolated tornadoes is possible uh, tomorrow as well. Stay weather aware. If you have a no weather radio, keep those handy as well. Like I said, it's like having a tornado siren in your house. It, those things are so handy. Um, especially if the power goes out, things have battery backup, great asset to have uh, for sure. Now we get into Wednesday. Some of the same areas are under the gun as well again on Wednesday. So we've got uh, marginal risk from Oklahoma City all the way over towards uh, right around Hot Springs, Arkadelphia, El Dorado, Arkansas, uh, down to uh, just east or I'm sorry, just west of Monroe, Louisiana. Alexandria, Lafayette, over towards College Station, San Antonio, um, base uh, marginal risk here. S then we have a slight risk for Dallas-Fort Worth area yet again. Waco, Tyler, Texas, up to northeastern parts of Texas, Paris, Abilene, same areas. You're going to be under the gun again on Wednesday. Large hail, Damaging straight line winds, 60, 70 miles an hour, and isolated tornadoes is all possible for Tuesday 
and Wednesday. All right, let's take a look at future radar. You can see a timestamp right over here in the far upper left corner. Uh, so this is Monday at 4 o'clock, which we are way past that because I had to, I had to uh, back it up to the 18Z HRR because it goes out to 48 hours so we can see what's going on. Now, overnight, we're going to have some showers and uh, uh, maybe some little heavier showers uh, develop out here towards Arkansas and parts of southern, southeast Missouri as we head into the early morning hours of Tuesday. This is 2 a.m. on Tuesday. Snow is starting to break out in Colorado here and a few showers out here towards uh, Illinois and Iowa. Now, as we get towards 8 to 9, 10 o'clock tomorrow, we're having a lot some overriding precipitation here across Oklahoma and uh, parts of Kansas. And this is this is the area that's been this have had a lot of drought over the past year or so, and it continues to get worse. So this is very welcome, beneficial rains for parts of this area as well. So lots of rain up here through Kansas, through uh, northern parts of Oklahoma. This is 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And then the severe weather will start ramping up as we head into uh, tomorrow night across Texas and then in through maybe uh, some strong storm or two across Oklahoma. But lots of rain here and then heavy, heavy snow out here towards Colorado. Like I said, one or two feet is likely above 6,500 feet in Colorado. All right, so then we get into Wednesday and Thursday here. Lots of overriding precipitation across Oklahoma, parts of Kansas here. Snow is starting to starting to seep into parts of uh, northeastern parts of Mexico, or New Mexico now um, as we go forward. So this is, I think this is underdone some in Texas. Uh, so we'll just have to wait and uh, like wait and see here. Uh, but uh, overall, the next uh, few days is going to be very wet across um, basically the western half of Te or Kansas, most of Oklahoma. And most of uh, the panhandles of Texas and uh, severe weather uh, down here in central and northeastern parts of Texas as well. Lots of rain that's going to happen here. So you're probably wondering, well, how much rain are we talking? Uh, let's take a look at that. We're going to use a national blend of models that takes all the models and puts them all together and creates an average, basically. So this is uh, precipitation for tomorrow all the way through midnight tomorrow, um, a midnight uh, early Wednesday morning, one to, or inch, probably a half an inch to inch and inch and a quarter here across uh, Oklahoma. Uh, parts of south central parts of Kansas as well, maybe half inch or so western Kansas, and a lot of this upslopey uh, that's happening out here in Colorado. Very heavy, heavy wet snow, like I said, above 6,500 feet, one to two feet is possible there. And then we have some storms down here to, to contend with tomorrow as well with some severe weather. Now, as you can see what happens uh, when we go into Wednesday, a bigger this bigger impulse is coming out of the Rockies diving southeast and a lot more uh, overriding precipitation is going to happen on Wednesday and look at how much this thing just blows up we got basically two to three to four inches as possible across uh, southern um, southern parts of Kansas southwest Kansas um, parts of the Oklahoma panhandle here uh, same with in Texas Panhandle, and then most of Oklahoma, two to four inches, probably locally five to six, is possible before we it's all said and done here. So this is all the way uh, through uh, Friday, and uh, you can see the like one to two inches over here in Arkansas as well, especially especially western half of Arkansas, far southwestern Missouri, and then an inch to two across the. Uh, Basically, Dallas to north, north of there, towards the red or the the river here. Um, then, like I said, across Oklahoma, that's basically a bullseye here. Southern parts of Kansas through Oklahoma is a bullseye. Two to four inches, locally five, maybe six uh, inches is possible. And uh, you guys really need this moisture out there. So um, this is good news for you all. Now here's the here's the total. Precipitation for the next seven days. A lot of this coming before by Friday, 
across uh, the south uh, south central plains here over towards arkansas and then this thing as this impulse rides east later this week here's more rain possible across the southeast into the into the mid-atlantic uh, like i said a general uh, one to three inches is possible across most of the southeast even into florida possible as well maybe some locally higher amounts of four to five uh, just depends on if you get some of those heavier thunderstorms or not that uh, train through, especially in Florida and the southeast here and parts of Texas um, as we go throughout the week. All right, so here's the latest 6 to 10 day temperature outlook. Uh, this is through May 4th. And we, like I said, the eastern half of the country is way below average. Uh, like I said, we've had some frost and freezes across uh, parts of the area. And I've been trying to warn you guys for over a week now uh, that uh, this impending um, impending frost and freezes were coming because of this northwest flow is going to set up. We do have a negative AO right now as well. It kind of tanked. So that helped drive the this cold southeast across most of the eastern half of the country. Big high pressure setting up across the west. And that's just basically going to happen probably until about um, just before middle of May, and then we'll start warming back up across uh, the rest of the country here. But overall, as we get these impulses down through the Northwest flow, we have to keep an eye on, there's gonna be off and on frost and freeze potential probably for the next week, week and a half or so. Uh, and then we just, something we need to keep an eye on. Like frost and freeze potential will, will keep ramping up as these impulses, like I said, come down out of this northwest flow, dragging that cold air behind it. Uh, so that's something, like I said, we need to watch over the next uh, six to 10 days or so across, across the southeast and the eastern half of the country. All right, so that's basically what's happened this week. Let's do a recap. This is the, this is the most significant part uh, is severe weather. This is tomorrow, slight risk. Uh, from Dallas, Texas, Austin, Fort Worth, Arlington, over Plano as well. Uh, slight risk here. Like I said, all modes of severe weather is possible. You have an outside chance of a severe th storm or two in this marginal risk as well. Uh, Houston, San Antonio, Oklahoma City, even over here towards Miami, Florida, there's a marginal risk of severe weather as well. Okay, so like I said, Large hail, damaging straight line winds, 60, 70 miles an hour, and some isolated tornadoes is possible tomorrow. And then as we go into Wednesday, the same area is basically uh, under the gun again. Dallas, Fort Worth, Arlington, Plano, over to Garland, Texas, Waco as well, Abilene, slight risk basically for large hail, damaging straight line winds, and a few tornadoes out there, and a marginal risk around that area from San Antonio, Austin, Oklahoma City. And you have uh, some severe weather down here, uh, marginal risk, that is, over towards Miami and Tampa in Florida. All right, y'all, thank you so much for watching. That's what This is what's happening uh, this week. Uh, if there's any changes, I will be back on here uh, probably tomorrow evening. Uh, with another update on the severe weather and this heavy, uh, heavier soaking rain potential across the South Central and then eventually getting to the Southeast and Mid-Atlantic as we go throughout the week. Stay weather aware and those areas are going to get severe weather over the next two days. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And I want to thank you to our supporters and members on Facebook and YouTube for supporting the work we do for you all to bring you uh, basically give keep you ahead of any type of weather that's coming into the area.